When we conduct a piece of research, just as any other walk of life, we should be mindful of our behaviour, what we do or say, and the effect that might have on other people involved in the research. Research ethics is concerned with the appropriateness and the effects of what we do as researchers. The stakeholders in a research study who may be affected include the participants who take part, such as someone being interviewed or filling out a questionnaire. Organisations on whose behalf the research is being conducted, who are probably also paying for the research, the researcher herself, and of course the wider society in which the research is taking place. There are four key principles to conducting research ethically, and if we disregard them, then one or more stakeholders may be at risk. The first principle is that of avoidance of harm or loss of dignity. We should not do anything that would cause physical harm to anyone, such as trialling an unsafe product. We are also responsible for both participants or researchers' personal safety, for example, the location we use to conduct research or the time of day. Also be aware of psychological harm, such as causing distress or embarrassment, perhaps through insensitive questioning. The second principle is that of transparency, being honest, open and clear with everyone about the nature of the research is important. We achieve this, for example, by obtaining the informed consent of participants. Thirdly, we must be aware of the right to privacy of those involved. This means safeguarding participant anonymity and ensuring that any data provided is treated confidentially. Finally, a key principle is that of researcher integrity. This means that as researchers, we should always behave in a professional, honest and respectful way in terms of both the conduct and reporting of our research. New ethical challenges have arisen as a result of the increased use of the internet as a medium for data collection. The internet allows such public access to the thoughts and ideas of others that new questions arise regarding privacy, anonymity or confidentiality in this medium. Today, codes of practice have been created by many research bodies that provide guidelines to researchers on appropriate conduct and good practice when carrying out research. In addition, most institutions such as universities, medical schools or research funding bodies have research ethics committees who provide policies and procedures for the ethical approval of research prior to the study commencing. If you are conducting a project as part of a course of study, you're likely to have ethical procedures to follow and you should make sure you understand and apply them. Regardless of the existence of formal procedures, as researchers, we should all be mindful of our role in the ethical conduct of our research and take responsibility for that.